Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anisia Antoine. The solution's top stories. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is urging St. Lucians to use the National Helpline. The first St. Lucia mural is unveiled. And the Toko Foundation's outreach to the youth. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is urging St. Lucians to use the National Helpline 203 to get the necessary support to overcome challenging mental and emotional issues. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. St. Lucians are urged to utilize the National Helpline, telephone number 203, which is expected to provide support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress. Council of the St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center, Chanel Eli Box, spoke on the process for accessing the services available for the National Helpline. You simply press 203 and you press call, you could use a landline, you can use a mobile phone and it is free and like I said it is 24-7. So as long as you call you'll be connected to a call responder and from there the call responder will assess to see what issues a person may be experiencing and to connect them to the necessary services. Those services could be anything from psychological services to psychiatric services or a myriad of other services offered on the island. So as long as you call, your information is fully confidential and you speak to the call responder, the call responder will not identify themselves. However, you can communicate with them. I know that's something that makes persons feel a little bit uncomfortable, that they don't know who they're speaking to, but these are trained professionals who will keep anything that you say to them confidential and they will try as best as possible to connect you to the services that you're comfortable with and they will explain what they're doing as well. Eli Box also appealed to individuals or family members who may have someone experiencing an emotional crisis to use the National Helpline to speak to a professional. Oftentimes, persons think that the person who's experiencing the thoughts should be the one to call. However, if you have noticed any signs or symptoms of someone experiencing mental health concerns, you can call on their behalf. And actually, if you call and you don't want to disclose, that you were the one to, who called, you could just simply let the call respondent know that I just want you to contact this person, I'm concerned about them, and they wouldn't even disclose that you were the one who called. Eliminating suicide is a communal effort. We need each person to notice the signs and the symptoms, and those things range from persons posting about death, persons talking about wanting to kill themselves, experiencing hopelessness, a loss of purpose, all of those things count as warning signs. And if someone is communicating those things to you, or posting it on social media, by all means, please call the helpline. It's a free call. It's 24-7 and it doesn't cost you anything. The National Helpline telephone number 203 is a free and confidential service available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fena Neptune. Invest St. Lucia has unveiled the first St. Lucia mural at the duty-free shopping complex Point Seraphine. Point Seraphine has been planning to do a mural for several years and finally erected the structure in the beginning of 2020. However, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been sitting awaiting a grand unveiling. More from Roger Barrow Lawrence. Point Seraphine came alive with a burst of cultural activity that denoted the melodious chants of Dame Sesen Descartes and invigorating characters of the late Sir Derek Walcott as Invest St. Lucia unveiled a sprawling mural. General Manager of Point Seraphine, Erlen Labadie says the mural will be the newest photo opportunity and authentic landmark in the Castries Basin. He said this addition to the shopping complex is not only for beautification and tourist attraction, but a source of St. Lucian pride. The paintings, Labadie says, were carefully chosen to portray St. Lucia's past present and future through cultural and traditional symbols. With the name St. Lucia only having 10 letters, there was still no way of fully encompassing the rich culture, diversity, and complicated history of our country, even with the span of 50 feet by six feet. But today, what we are about to present is nothing short of tailor-made presentation of our iconic and invaluable contributions towards what has made 
people what we are today. Before the COVID-19 pandemic hit, Point Seraphine welcomed in excess of 4,000 cruise ship passengers in a day. The shopping complex has also been open to locals for decades, providing opportunities for income, commerce, and a steady stream of customers for tenants. It is the largest shopping complex on island and one of the key points of entry. It will be the latest and possibly the most significant modern landmark in Castries. Our port will join the likes of popular international destinations like Cancun, Budapest, Amsterdam, and Toronto, who all have signs spelling out their city's names. Today, we are introducing it to St. Lucians here with us or watching online, giving them a first glance to see our interpretation of what represents them. But we want this hard work by our artist, Naja Simeon, to have long-term return as well. Once this pan pandemic and protocols allow, this mural will become a new item on any tours or tour operator's itinerary. When our borders open, people returning home or coming to visit Paradise for the first time will be welcome from the sea and air. And similar to when you see the pitons knowingly peeking through the airplane window, our St. Lucia mural will say hello with the same color, vibrance, and love as our people. All St. Lucians are encouraged to visit Point Seraphin and take in the picturesque scene. The mural was done by Naja Simeon of Saki Productions, known for numerous contributions to the community through art. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney is continuing to rally the international community to adopt the pre-testing approach to travel. Honorable Chastney was recently interviewed by Ian King of Sky News and highlighted St. Lucia's management of COVID-19. The island's success, Honorable Chastney said, can be attributed to the pre-testing protocol along with the efforts of the Ministry of Health and public cooperation. British Airways will be starting a daily service to, uh, to St. Lucia in October. Um, right now we have about one third of our, our hotels open. We're hoping to have about two thirds of our hotels open in October. And by that time, as I indicated, that we should be seeing the opening up of our famous Sulphur Springs tours to our Pitons, hiking throughout the islands, our zip line operations. And so all those operations are being currently um, certified as we speak. Um, and we're now you know, on a huge crusade to really convince the airline industry, challenge them to adopt pre-testing as a prerequisite to traveling. I mean, we've, we've certainly not seen um, the return to travel to the extent that we would like to. I mean, I was a vice president of marketing and sales for Air Jamaica when we had 9-11. Um, and it would be difficult to think that persons would have traveled if in fact the stringent security processes that followed 9-11 had not been implemented. And we think the same thing here, airlines, cannot fly um, with COVID social distancing, meaning the middle aisle free. Um, it's just not economically feasible for them to do that. And I think it helps a, in a big way. If persons are pre-tested, you know that you're going on a flight in which everybody's been pre-tested. Um, and we have seen that that protocol has worked very well. This is NTN Nightly. Coming up, the Toko Foundation giving back. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. Goodwill Ambassador His Excellency Taj Weeks has made another contribution to improving the lives of the nation's children. The They Often Cry Outreach Toko Foundation, founded by St. Lucian Artiste and Goodwill Ambassador Taj Weeks, presented the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development with laptops and tablets to assist schools in meeting the demand for increased access to digital devices. 
The foundation has donated to various sectors and organizations on the island before in the areas of at-risk youth, education, sports and health. Mr. Weeks expressed gratitude to all stakeholders involved in procuring the devices. We were really happy though the Toko team to be able to pull this off. I mean, that is falls kind of under our mandate that we're here to help when help is needed. And, um, you know, we don't pick it from our backyards. We don't pick it from the fruit trees or anywhere. We work hard to make it happen. And we really do, we really truly appreciate um, everybody coming together and making this happen. Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Dr. Fiona Meyer, expressed gratitude to the Toko Foundation for their support. Today we are so privileged to have received from the Toko Foundation devices for eight of our educational institutions across the island. And that gratitude we extend because we know that it was given with a genuine heart, really looking at the educational attainment of our children. And so at a as a department, we've always recognized that some of our limitations are limitations of the physical devices, but more so access for our children to be able to gain educational attainment and not simply play on the devices. And so this is why it was important to look at schools and look at a school set that can support quite a few children. So it's not about individual children getting a device, it's about ensuring that the entire school population can benefit from it. The handing over of the donations by the Toko Foundation took place on Thursday, August 27, 2020 at the Ministry of Education headquarters. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meantime, the Toko Foundation, through the National Youth Council's Pledge for a Child, donated 200 pairs of shoes. Edison Lane is the Public Relations Officer of the National Youth Council. And we are just grateful, of course, to Toko Foundation and, of course, to all the administrative, um, administrative individuals involved for bringing together this donation to the youth of St. Lucia through the St. Lucia National Youth Council Pledge for a Child. So, of course, we appreciate it and we once again say thank you on behalf of all the team put together for Pledge for a Child as well as the St. Lucia National Youth Council executives and all of our body members. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anisia Antoine.